Hey Vision Kids, I hope you're excited about today's lesson. Uh, we're gonna continue in our study of Psalm 23 this week. You should be able to say the entire chapter of Psalm 23 along with Miss April. So I really appreciate all the hard work that was put into that. Also, you guys have a new lesson this week with Mr. Adam Walls. You might remember him as the magician guy or the guy that sings the silly songs or has the funny voices, but he's actually a missionary on deputation on his way to the country of Thailand. Uh, we also have a special excerpt from the book written by Bethany Bloom about Jim Elliott, who was a missionary to Ecuador. Uh, Miss Ashley's gonna read that for us today. Um, it's really exciting when you think about the author, Miss Bloom. She is on her way to be a missionary to the country of Ecuador, which is the same country that Jim Elliott was a missionary to. Also, if you wait all the way to the end of our video, you get to learn how to make some clay earrings, some dangly clay earrings with Miss Alexa and Miss Evie. So enjoy today's lesson. Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm going to do my Bible verse. Psalm 118. One. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a joke. Why did the bike collapse? Because it was too tired. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you grow, 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 and you grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, forget to pray, forget to pray. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you shrink, 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 and you shrink, shrink, shrink. Neglect your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got you and me. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Let's sing if you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. Good job. Okay, this is our last song. It is The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the prayers went up. The rains came down as the prayers went up. The rains came down as the prayers went up, and the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand, and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up. The rains came down as the floods came up, and the house on the sand went splat. So build your life upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey guys, I wanted to come back and visit with you guys this week and we are going to go over Psalms 23, the whole thing. 
since we've been learning it week after week after week, I really wanted to have you guys try to do it all together, okay? And then maybe next week, I will have Charlotte recite the whole thing, okay? So let's go ahead and go over Psalms 23. Let's throw some hand motions in there, right? Because we're kind of doing six verses is a long bit. So ready? Psalms 23, okay? The Lord, if you have an L finger, Lord, and you put it from the top of you towards your waist, the top of you towards your waist, okay? So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's <clears throat> sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, okay? Thou preparest a table, you can do a table, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So do all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house, you can do house, of the Lord forever. All right, so let's do that one more time. Okay, are you ready? I'm just gonna fix my paper here. All right, Psalms 23, we're gonna go a little bit faster. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. My cup runneth over. Oh, wait, thou anointest my head with oil, right? My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right, guys, have a great week. Hola. Hi guys, I'm Grace and I'm Taylor and we are missionaries in Bolivia, South America. We're here to tell y'all some really cool facts about Bolivia. I think everyone has a favorite food and one of my favorite foods is anticuchos. You're probably wondering, what are anticuchos? Well, anticuchos is cow heart. It might seem kind of nasty, but it's actually really good. We also have sheep's head and cow tongue, but don't worry, we have really good food like pizza and hamburgers. Some fun places that we have to visit in Bolivia is the salt flats. Yes, the salt flats. Everything's made out of salt. They even have a hotel made out of salt. Also, a big majority of Bolivia is jungles. We have, and we have really cool animals like jaguars, anacondas, and really beautiful insects. But one of the main reasons we're in Bolivia is because of the need of the gospel. They're just the same way that you go to church Every morning for Sunday school, we have kids that come to our church that want to hear about God's word. I hope you enjoy this, uh, some fun facts about Bolivia. Bye. Ciao. Have you ever been tricked before? We're going to talk about someone in the Bible that was tricked today. So let's figure out who it is. Does this even work?
Hey guys, this is Adam Walls, church planning missionary to the country of Taiwan. And like I asked the question before, have you ever been tricked before? Doesn't it just drive you nuts when somebody tricks you? They they, they conjure you into doing something that you don't want to do. And, and it's, it all sounds great and dandy until eventually you find out that what they wanted you to do was something that they usually didn't want to do because they knew it was going to cause a world disaster or something. I remember growing up, I have a little brother named Caleb. Caleb is two years younger than I am. And when we were growing up, I told you before, I we loved to ride bicycles. And this was a story before the bicycle story that I told a couple of weeks ago. This is actually before that when my brother couldn't even ride a bicycle. So he had a one of those three-wheel bicycles. You know what I'm talking about? The tricycle things that's got one huge reel in the very beginning and it's got two small wheels in the front. And what we were doing, we were riding our bikes on the porch. We had a decent sized porch. We were able to ride off or ride on the porch there. And what there was, there was a flower bed alongside the porch, right after the porch. There was no guardrails or anything. It wasn't very high up, but there was one part of the porch that if you were to, let's just say the size of your bed to the floor, that's that's basically the height of the, the, the porch down to the ground. It wasn't very big, but when you're a kid that's about, I don't know, two foot tall, then you, it's a really big drop to you. And I remember growing up watching these, these bikers as they would ride and they would ramp and they'd do all these really cool things. And I thought, man, I want to do that. I want to be that guy. I want to ride my bike and I want to do some ramps. So I thought, hey, why don't me and my brother try to do some bicycle stunts? Why don't we try to ramp off the porch here? That'd be so cool. And, all, and everybody will be like, oh, yeah, you guys rock. And so that's what I thought was going on in my head. So I talked Caleb into and said, hey, now, listen. This is what we need to do. You you need to do this first, and then I'll follow you because I don't want to show you up. I don't want you to feel bad after I pull. I, you know, I ride my bike off here, and then ramp, and it'll be all cool and stuff. So what you gonna do is this is what you gonna get. You gonna get on your bicycle, your three wheeler here, and then you're gonna just ride really fast, and then ride off of the porch, and you're gonna land, and it's gonna be awesome. And I remember my brother thinking, Wait, what? You want me? You want me to ride my bike off the porch? That's not. That that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, you, you're absolutely love it. You, you need hold on. Wait, just this one second here. Uh, yeah, put this helmet on. Okay, I'll I'll take it out. Just, just just like this. That that's great. That's wonderful. All I gotta do is you put that helmet on, and then you're gonna ride really fast off the porch. Okay, I, I, I'll do it. I can't see very well. That just means the helmet's working. You're gonna do great. Just do it. Just go time. Go time. Go time. Are you sure? Just okay. All right, I'll do it. You got it. Just go. Just keep going. Okay, all right. Wait, which way is the, the, the side of the porch go up that I'm supposed to ride off of? And I remember watching my brother. And as I was watching my brother, I was thinking, now if he survives, I'm going to do it. Because if he can do it, I can do it. But I was thinking in the back of my head, if my brother does not survive, then there ain't no way in heaven I'm doing it. So I remember watching my brother. He's pedaling, he's pedaling, he's going as fast as he can. And all of a sudden, what was right off here at the porch, just like right there. And then all of a sudden, is the drop, he just went, he was, it was going to be awesome. I could hear the music. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he didn't make it. And I remember hearing my I remember hearing my brother scream. Ah! <laughs> and then my mom and dad came running outside and they're like, what happened? How did you fall? And then Caleb's like, he tried to kill me. And that was about it for me. And then I got spankings afterwards. I realized that that is not the time to trick people. But we're going to be talking in the Bible today, Genesis chapter 3. And in Genesis chapter 3, we're going to be talking about Satan and how he tricked Adam and Eve. Last week, we talked about God being the creator. And now this time, we're going to be talking about God that does not destroy his creation when we fall. Take a look at what the Bible says. In Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we found out God the Creator is a good God, and He's the one that calls the shots. Well, eventually we get to Genesis chapter 3, but right before Genesis chapter 3, God gives a command. He tells Adam and Eve something that they cannot do. But first, He lies out, He shows them everything that He created in the garden. He says, I want you to take a look at everything that I see. Everything that you see is perfect, it's wonderful, it's great. And I want you to be sure that you can have all of it. The Bible, God was telling Adam and Eve, you can have everything that you see except for one thing. You see the tree in the middle of the garden? That is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that tree is mine. You cannot eat of it. And the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And that was a promise given by God. He wanted to put that tree there to allow Adam and Eve to make the decision that they could either choose their way or his way. And that's why they put the, the, the God put the tree in the, in the middle of the garden. He says, do not eat of it. But then we get to Genesis chapter 3. And 
And Genesis chapter 3 starts off with this by saying in verse 1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. He started to get Eve to start doubting what God had said. She said, He said, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now I want you to take a look at something really quickly. The Bible says Satan was starting to tempt, he was starting to trick Eve in what she was supposed to be, know, what she knew in her head that God told her not to do. And so he says, did God really say what you think he said? Did he really say you can't eat of every tree of the garden? Now see what Satan tries to do. First, he's going to get you to doubt what God really told you to do. And then he's going to make God look like a party pooper. He's going to make God look like the one that's always just hammering down on you saying you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and you can't do this. But that's not at all what God said. God said you can eat of every tree of the garden that you want. You just can't have this one tree right here, this tree of knowledge of good and evil. But Satan said, did God really say you can't eat of every tree of the garden? He's making God sound like a real party pooper, like someone that doesn't want you to have fun. And I want you to see how Eve responds to this. The Bible says, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, she says, in the tree in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Eventually, Eve starts thinking herself, wait a second, maybe God maybe God is a party pooper, maybe he, maybe he said, I mean, I know, and listen to what she said, I know that I'm not supposed to eat of it, then she adds words to it, making it sound like Kind of like what your mom and dad tell you. You can't go out past 10 o'clock. You can't, you, you, you have to do this. You have to be here at this time. And at first, I mean, it sounds okay, but then your friends start getting you to doubt what your mom and dad said. Did your mom and dad really say you can't beat out at 10, or did they just mean you have to be back before the hour of 10 ends? And so you start thinking, well, you, you might be right. Well, hold on one second. My mom and dad said that I can't be out. They they, they said that if I'm out but, um, after 10, then they're just going to destroy me. Well, your mom and dad didn't really say that, but you're starting to think, yeah, look at all these rules and regulations my mom and dad are putting on me. I I don't like this. And that's exactly what Eve's doing right here. She said, neither shall we touch it, lest we die. She's starting to make, think in her brain, well, maybe God really is a party pooper. Maybe he is someone that's just laying down the law and I can't stand it. And so the Bible says that the, then Satan says, you won't surely die because God knows the day you eat of the fruit, you will be as God. You will know good and evil. And yeah, that's what caught Eve's attention. What caught Eve's attention as, wait a second, I get to call the shots? You mean the, the creator of the universe, he no longer will have control over me if I eat this fruit right over here? If I just eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I get to call the shots? Well, pff, bring it on. The Bible says that Adam and Eve ended up eating the fruit that they were told not to simply because they wanted to dethrone God. They wanted to call the shots. They wanted to be God. They wanted to tell the creator what they were wanting to do, and they didn't want the creator to have any not. They didn't want him to be able to tell them anything to do anymore. And that's what our problem is. That's what that's the that's the whole root of sin is that we dethrone God, we make him lower than he really is by saying we'll call the shots, we will say what's right and wrong, and you can't tell us what to do anymore because we are gods ourselves. And that's exactly what Satan wants us to get to think about ourselves. That was how Satan tricked Adam and Eve. The Bible says that when we try to dethrone God, that's what ruined the relationship. That's what broke the relationship that Adam and Eve once had with God because no longer could he have fellowship with his creation when they wanted separation from him. They didn't want God to call the shots anymore. They wanted to be separated from him so that Adam and Eve could call their own shots and God had to be over here by himself doing his own thing. And that's what sin does. It separates us. It breaks the, the, the fellowship, the bond that we once had with God. And so that's what you see afterwards though. As the Bible says, when God comes back and in the cool of the day as he was walking and talking with Adam and Eve beforehand, the Bible says that he came down and Adam and Eve realized that they were naked. They were hiding in the bushes. They sewed fig leaves together to make themselves apron and they were hiding in the bushes and God says, Adam, Eve, where are you? And they said, we're hiding in the bushes because we're naked. And God said, who told you that you were naked? 
Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to? Now, God knows the answer to that question, but when God asks a question, it's not for his, the answer isn't for his benefit, it's for ours. It was for Adam and Eve to start thinking, what did we do? We messed up. And so Adam says, it's Eve's fault. Eve said, it's the serpent's fault. Because God keeps his promises, the Bible says that God made a promise that sin would come into the world and death by sin. God said, the day you eat of the, free, the tree, you will surely die. That day, they did not physically die, but their spiritual bond that they had with God was broken immediately. And the Bible says that he had to place a curse on Adam and then he placed a curse on Eve. And then he placed a curse on the serpent. I want you to take a look at what he says to the serpent. The Bible said, the Lord God, in verse 14, the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. God's wanting you to understand that, that Satan himself, and it is very possible that snakes had feet until then. And God said, cursed, you'll be on your belly. You'll be eating the dust of the ground. But the main point of the entire thing of what God is saying is that God, Satan, every time, every time someone thinks about you, every time someone someone talks about you, it's going to be a nasty way. It's going to be a disgusting way. You're going to be the lowest of the low. Nobody's going to like you. And then I want you to take a look at what else he says. Um, and I will put enmity, a separation between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, when I first read that, when I was reading it and studying that before, I had no idea what that was talking about. It made no sense to me whatsoever. I mean, I, what are you talking about, God? What does that mean? But this is what God was saying. Uh, to, to boil all down, this is what God was saying. Satan tried to destroy what God had made perfect. Satan, and he did destroy what God made perfect, but he tried to destroy what God loved, and that was the human race. He said, I'm going to destroy this race so God can't use you. And then God says, watch how the human race ends up destroying you, Satan, because I'm going to send someone. He's going to be all human. And that all human is going to end up destroying you, is going to crush your head, and you're going to bruise him along the way. The Bible says later on that God made coats of skin for Adam and Eve. The Bible says something had to die. Blood had to be shed so that Adam and Eve's sin, their nakedness, could be covered. They, they needed a covering for their nakedness, their, their shame. They were ashamed to be in front of God. The Bible says that he had to kill an innocent animal to cover Adam and Eve's nakedness, their sin. You know, that's a picture. The Bible in Genesis chapter 3 right here is pointing to the cross where God was saying one day, I'll send someone to shed his perfect blood to make a covering for you. What Jesus, what God was saying here that I will, uh, I will cause a, a separation between your seed and her seed, and I will, uh, this seed, this human will destroy you, Satan. Eventually, we find out that, that would be Jesus. Jesus came all 100% God, came down to be 100% man as well. And when he died on the cross, he destroyed Satan's power. He destroyed what sin's power had on us. And now we can have fellowship with Jesus Christ because when we accept what Jesus did on the cross for us, when we ask him to be our Lord and our Savior, the Bible says Jesus makes a covering for us. That's exactly what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's where you see Jesus in Genesis chapter 3. God did not destroy Adam and Eve immediately. He didn't destroy them at all. He made a way so that they could have fellowship with him again. That's the amazing God we have. And I'm sure hope that you'll take this into consideration. Think about what God has done for you and ask yourself the question, have I made this God my Lord and my Savior today? Talk to you later. Matthew 20, 28, just as the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. Why did the middle school girl climb a ladder? To get to high school. So this is a mosquito that I caught. Can't really see it. Um, here, maybe if I pick it up. Nope. You can see it now. Okay. And only girl mosquitoes bite. Um, suck your blood. And boy mosquitoes have go to a plant, which um, I don't think I um. um which I don't know which kind of plant. And um, their eggs can float down on water and stick together and connect. So where do they lay their eggs at? In the water. Like on top of the water? Yeah, like 
in the river. Mm. I don't think that mosquito. I think mosquitoes are aware of waterfalls. Okay, so like, st so water that's still. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they're corroded to it, and also, this is how you um can keep bugs away, uh, um mosquitoes away. You can have bug spray. Mm -hmm. You can put bug spray on yourself. These mosquito things um don't work that much, not that well, but they do work. And you can put it on, and then are they like this one? What are they? They're bug spray stickers. Stickers, okay. And another way, if you don't have either of these or anything else, then put long sleeves on. You can even put a mask if you want to be silly. Mm -hmm. And you can put pants on. And that's how you keep the skaters away. Okay. Now, let's go and let this one free. Right? There it goes. Bye! Hey everybody, it's Miss Ashley. I hope you guys are doing well. I miss you guys and I can't wait to see you all soon. So this morning I'm going to share with you a story about a missionary. And this story I'm going to tell it a little different because it was actually written by a missionary that you might know. If you know Miss Bethany and Mr. Kaysen, they are in Peru right now and they are training to go to Ecuador to preach the gospel and to see people saved through Jesus. So Miss Bethany actually wrote this book it's called Jim's Timeless Journey, and it's reliving the life of Jim Elliott. And if you haven't read this book yet, I totally and very much completely ask that you do. It is a wonderful story about Jim Elliott, who is actually a missionary to Ecuador. So it's really cool. Beth Miss Bethany and Mr. Casey are going to Ecuador, and Jim Elliott went to Ecuador. And she wrote this story. It's about a boy named Jack, and Jack is probably about your age. Um, he's just very, he knows the gospel, but he's curious about what he can do for God. And Mr. Williams, he is one of the church members that Jack goes to church with. He takes him on this journey, this time traveling journey to relive the life of missionary Jim Elliott. And we're just gonna read a little bit of his story today. And just to give you a little bit of background, Mr. Williams and Jack, they're watching Jim Elliott from afar because they've time traveled. So if you know anything about time travel, you might be able to understand how that works a little bit better than I could. But Mr. Williams and Jack are watching from afar the life and the story of Jim Elliott in real life. And so Jack and Mr. Williams right now are at the Elliott's home and they are seeing a dinner that's happening between Jim and his friend Billy and the Elliott family of this missionary to Africa. They're all eating and talking together. So I'm gonna start on page 15. If you have the book, you're more than welcome to follow along with me. Mr. Williams and Jack found an open window near the dining room to watch the families eat supper and hear the conversation. Jack heard the dinner prayer and smelled all the wonderful smells coming through the window and briefly wondered if they could eat while they were here. But he forgot all about his stomach when the missionary began to talk about his adventures in Africa and everything he'd been through during his time there. He was to go back next month he explained and started another church so the African people could hear about Jesus. He spoke of people's lives and had, who had been completely changed and kids who would walk for miles and miles to come to their Sunday school, even though they couldn't read or write. Although his wife was opening a school for them to learn, Jack could see little Jim was interested in the stories as he was. When the missionary had finished talking, he looked up at Jim and smiled. What do you want to do when you grow up, Jim? I don't know, sir. I think I might want to fly a plane or wrestle. What did you want to do when you were little? I wanted to be a doctor. But then someone helped me realize I could either help people temporarily for a little time while they're living on earth, or I could help people eternally. Everyone's going to die one day and it won't matter who is the best, the fastest or the smartest. It will only matter if they know Jesus. And when he and when they told me that, I decided I would serve God and help people to know about Jesus because that's the only thing that will last forever. Well, Jim said, do you think I could serve God too? Of course, you can serve him right now. The best thing you can do right now is to start reading your Bible every day and talking to your friends about Jesus. When you read your Bible, you will know what God says and will have the courage to talk to your friends. 
Sometimes God puts friends in our lives just because we can talk to them about Jesus and no one else can. So that's a little bit of a story from from Jack's timeless journey. And I want you to understand a little bit of what is going on in this story. So Jim is asking this missionary, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? How did, what did you want to do? Because he asked the same question. And somebody told this missionary that it didn't really matter if you were a doctor or anything like that, because he wanted to do something that would matter in eternity. And for us, if you know Jesus Christ, you have a place in eternity. That means you have a place forever with God, which is a really special thing. But I know you guys know there's people all over the world who don't know that. And that's what this missionary was trying to talk to Jim about. So if you want to know the rest of his story, you should definitely go read Miss Bethany's book. If you don't have a copy, I can get you one. So you can just ask me and I would be happy to get me one. So you can see how God can use you, maybe a 10 year old, an 11 year old, a five year old, to do something big in the kingdom of God. And I promise you guys, it's just gonna start with reading your Bible. So pick up your Bible, get in the word of God, and understand who God is so that you can have the courage to talk to people about his goodness. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and I will see you soon. Bye. John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Hey, today we will be making clay earrings. We will need, you will need bottle, a needle nose pliers, an X-Acto knife, a six millimeter jump ring, and an earring thing to put in your ear. Um, we would, you would need poly, polymer clay, and you would need beige, cream, sand, and dark red. If you're making a pizza. <laughs>
your your um earring is done in the oven you need to get the jumper ring and you need to open it with these two tweezers and then you put it inside like this and like this put the earring part on it then you close it up with this one This is the finished product. It, these are the pizza earrings. And they look really good. <laughs> if you think this is um, only for girls, then boys, you can make some earrings for your mom, sister, or aunt, or grandma, or anybody. <laughs> I really hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you so much for all the people that have um, taken time to put together these videos. Our teens at Vision Baptist Church have been amazing. We've had um, help from our uh, guys at the training center. Um, we've also had help from some of our missionaries and some of our missionary kids. Um, all you moms um, out there that have been helping your kids make videos, thank you so much. Um, if you want to send a video for next week, that would be great. Uh, we need videos of where you're singing songs. Uh, jokes, verses, um, verses if you can say them in another language. Uh, you can send me a would you rather or if you want to do a how-to video uh, for next week that would be great as well. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next week.